You should come with. That wasn't the deal. You mean you want more? Even though you've got a priceless reward coming your way? Do you know what I promised him? I'll do it. time and I'm hungry. I'm studying so I can read Is something wrong? You could say that. Sounds like someone spooked the kids. Yeah, two of them disappeared. They ran away after this creepy guy wearing black clothes showed up. A Turk? That's what I thought, but no. It's this guy who's always stumbling around town in a dirty robe full of holes. They say he's sick or something. Oh, and he had some kind of number tattooed on his arm. I don't like the sound of this. I'm gonna check it out. I know someone who fits that description. I'll come with. Okay. Come on. This is coming across as a little bit strange to me. Not that we are going and doing side missions in this area. Well, sort of that we're doing side missions in this area. It is following suit with what we had done when we were in Sector 7 slums. We stopped for a little while and then had time to go and do a bunch of side missions. But as far as the story is concerned, it made a lot more sense to do it back then. Cloud didn't know if he was going to be rehired for the next mission. He didn't really even want to be and he needed to sort of establish himself as a mercenary in the area. Now in Sector 5, he doesn't plan on staying here, and he's trying to, kind of trying to get back to Sector 7. I know this place is off limits to grown-ups, but if we want to rescue them, well, we gotta break the rules. So all of this comes across as a little bit of a distraction for him. It's slowing down the story in a way. Now it does sort of work into it a bit, but well, you'll see. Oats! You're back! Eric's come to help. Yeah, leave it to us. We'll take care of it from here. But there are monsters out there! Don't worry. I've brought a super strong friend along with me. I used to be a soldier. So where's the guy? I don't know. He disappeared and we can't find him. Right now, let's worry about the kids. Come on. Pretty flower. Pretty blue flower. Won't you talk to me? What if they're eaten by monsters? They ran off this way. Be careful. Where do you think they went? Who knows? They're kids. Nothing to do but look all over. I just hope we find them in time. This is going to be another long episode here, so buckle up. About 45 minutes. Of course, being on YouTube, you could probably see that in advance. So, why did I even bother telling you? Here we are with another example of an area that was sort of abandoned in the Sector slums. In the uh, Midgar slums. See, there was the Sector 5 town, which may have a name, but I don't know it. And on the outskirts of it, you have this sort of area here. Now, on one hand, it seems a little weird that they have buildings that are really in no poorer condition than a lot of the buildings that we've seen inside the towns, but they are abandoned. Maybe it's possible that it's just because there are monsters everywhere and the monsters keep moving on in and people just sort of had to move out to avoid them. But I don't know why it's pretty close to the town and this is the area that the kids tend to go and play, so <laughs> a little dangerous. Not that kids are known for doing things safely. Look at their air conditioners here and everything. And generators. I guess it's a generator. Hmm. Ah, oh, there they are. And they're not alone. Nice little touch that I see on the weapons that they have is the actual materia that you have slotted into the weapon is visible. Now, I thought it was pretty cool in the original game that they included something like, and this wasn't in the earlier games, that whenever you changed weapons, except for Red 13, you change the weapon on the character, they're actually holding the weapon in the battle screens. Not on the field screens of the map, but in the battle screens. And that was a nice... Um, 
nice little touch that they put into that game that we hadn't really seen before. Now, of course, in this, that's pretty much standard. So they had to add some little touch, and the materia is actually slotted into the weapons. Now, if you upgrade the weapon to add more slots, I don't think more materia slots appear. Steady. Hold on. Excuse the speed up, but I have to hurry this episode along at least a little bit. Can't be here all day talking about this, and I can't have you being here all day listening to me ramble on about nonsense. So in a number of cases, especially during this episode, I'm going to be speeding up, like, travel or long fights, so we're not stuck here. This one here is running at about 400%. The speed that I'll speed it up won't be anywhere from 200 to 500%. There are some episodes, and previously, I think, where I'm... Where I sped it up to like 800%, just enough to, uh, <laughs> gotta keep the running time down. I do know this, they say, try not to make a video longer than, like, 8 minutes, or whatever the number is. And I'm definitely gonna have a hard time keeping episodes short for this game, because these dungeons are pretty damn long. Killed it. I'll go. Come on. Thank you. That was cool. Uh. <laughs> okay, let's head back. There were parts in the original game where Cloud had this unusual ability to jump an extremely long distance. Now, that was just sort of a um, traversal mechanic on the main map, and I, I guess maybe it occurred in a couple of, like, dialogue scenes and all that, too, where Cloud would have this goofy jumping animation where he'd uh, crouch down and then he'd throw his arms in the air and then leap like a ridiculous jump. But, um... I don't know, it comes across a little strange to me when looking at it in a much higher detailed, much higher, higher detailed game, better graphics and all that kind of stuff, with more realistically proportioned characters and everything, to watch a character leap across, like, impossible jumps like that. And when we were watching the fight with, like, Roke on the motorcycles, where he's doing wheelies and riding across the wall and then flipping around through the air while we're on this damn motorcycle. How did you get to be so strong? Well, you see, Cloud here used to be a soldier. He was? Did you go fight in the war? I might have. All of those jumps just come across to me as, let's say, strange. Now, I get that they're trying to... It, it, they're trying to honor the original aesthetic to the game, I guess, a little bit with the jumps and all that. But I think more it has to do with the vision of this game in Advent Children, where they're doing this crouching tiger, hidden dragon kind of shit all over the place. I can't say that I really care for that. In fact, it's one of maybe the major reasons why I didn't like Advent Children. So, careful with that shit. I'll do better. Don't know what happened. Like you, you can't just grow up to be a soldier. You gotta work at it. Cloud thinks I'm good enough to be one, right? Look at you, Mr. Popular. That was so cool, you guys. Especially that, oh, yeah! Yeah, it was really cool and you went like, yeah, yeah! You've got it all wrong. Yeah! Like that. No way, it was way faster than that. Yeah, yeah, like that. Fine, then how about, Isn't that right, Cloud? Isn't that right, Cloud? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Tifa, wait! Tifa! Tifa! Tifa? Tifa? <sighs> What's wrong? Nothing. Is Tifa like... 
your girlfriend? No. Hmm, but she's someone special. It's not like that. More like... I don't know how to explain. I see. Cloud doesn't know how to explain it because he doesn't even understand it himself. A little bit of a, I don't know, flashback or foreshadowing or something to, I guess, an eventual reveal about the true nature of their relationship. Thanks for helping our friends. Thank you. From now on, if you run into trouble, promise me you'll find an adult, okay? Okay, I will. And here, since you're so cool. You guys are both grown-ups, but you're also one of us now. You can come and play here whenever you want. They seem to be doing a lot of these awkward sort of foreshadowing things. Now, I think it was pretty important in the original game that you didn't see any of those kinds of flashbacks until later on. Now, of course, this game is segmented up. We're only going to get to the end of Midgar here, so you kind of have to bait the hook a little bit for the players. You can't just wait on everything. Don't worry, it'll be okay. Wait. Hmm. Not him. It looks pretty damn similar. Huh? There's the number, but why two? Who knows? Come to think. The reunion. There's nothing to fear. Sephiroth is. Do you? Sephiroth, the war hero? I know he died in an accident five years ago. They said so on the news. Maybe they did. But I've got a feeling he's still alive. Oh, right. Come on, let's go. Over here we got a kid who will exchange the Moogle medals that we've been collecting for items and weapons and shit. Where is he at? Hey Cloud! I know a lot of people around here need help. When I'm out on patrol, a lot of them tell me about their problems. Do you think you might be interested in helping out? Well, I'm all for it. We still have plenty of time. I'm on the clock. Don't worry, I give you permission. I always have the latest information. Come find me if you want to know. Oh my! Is that a Moogle? You can see me, Koopo? Then you two must be very, very special people. In that case, welcome to the Moogle Emporio. I'm the owner, Moggy. You must not be familiar with Mog the Moogle. It's a pretty famous fairy tale. Mog wanted to bring happiness to all the Moogles of the forest, so he decided to open a shop of wonders. That's right, Koopo. I open a store to bring happiness to the slums, like Mog. And you know, only people with the purest of hearts can even see Moogles. Uh, are you talking about me? Well, Moogle magic isn't perfect, Koopo. Anyway, we've collected all kinds of rare and wondrous goods. They can be yours if you've got enough Moogle medals. But they'll need to buy a membership first. Any Moogle medals, you could spend them here, Koopa. So, Moggy, what do you do with the medals we give you? Oh, you know what? I use them to make everyone happy. That's the duty of every Moogle. Of course, just like Mog the Moogle. I see you're working hard, Mr. Merc. Yep. 
So what are you gonna do next? Keep on working hard. As you always do, I'm sure. You know, this is how I earn a living. Huh? Really? I thought you were just doing it for fun. I suppose some people do. Hello, I'm some people. Nice to meet you. There are some really awkward interactions between these two. Okay, so that guy in the black. Now, it's not quite the same thing that I was saying before about the kind of foreshadowing that I didn't really care for. Because that guy, he was one of the Sephiroth clones or copies or whatever the hell they were supposed to be that we encountered throughout the first half of the game in the original Seven. There was a guy, there was one of them in the Sector 5 town, though. The Sector 5 slums town. He was the guy that R6. And he was in the, like a drainage tube or something like that. And he was living down there. A little bit fucked up and they didn't know what to do with him. So they just sort of left him there. Of course, the Sephiroth clones would have a more important role in the story later on. And we find out later, spoiler alert, that Cloud was one of them. You guys are great. Thanks to you, I've got a ton of medals to go. Which means I can bring happiness to a ton of people. Good for you. Hey, Cloud. Maybe say it like you mean it? Not until I'm happy. Go on, work your magic. Make me smile. From ear to ear. I'll need a lot more medals, Koopo. Well, that won't do. Come on, Cloud. Let's go get more. Good luck, guys. This is where I think the translation from Japanese to English doesn't really do the game that many favors, because when it's referred to these people being... Sephiroth clones, it kind of gives you a little bit of a wrong interpretation about what it is you're dealing with. It's not a clone like Dolly the Sheep was a clone, the where you take a person's like genetics and you create a genetic duplicate of them. This was more along the lines of taking like the cells of maybe like through gene therapy or some kind of shit and applying them to other people. Now why they did this, I guess maybe they were trying to recreate uh, the incredible soldier the Sephiroth was, but you had a few different, uh, you had all these people dressed in black with the numbers, you also had Cloud and you had Zack. Cloud is at least a little bit more functional than all these guys dressed in black. He seems to think he's a normal person even if he's not. Hey, any marks around? Shinra weapons are on the rampage. Five of them, like floating eyeballs. I saw them wander off into the scrap. But if they come back into town, it'd be a disaster. We need someone who's willing and able to fight. I'll handle it. You will? Oh man, you're the best! I could hear them shouting intruder detected or some other nonsense when they floated off. Be careful, they look dangerous. I got lost roaming around here, so I had to speed this up to like 800%. So, if you get, if you get a little sick watching this, um... Uh, Close your eyes or something. I'll let you know when it's over. And it's still going. Still going. Still going. Over. That way is a dead end. They were doing some construction, but quit halfway. Going in. Now, it's oftentimes blamed on Shinra for all the monsters that are creeping their way in the Midgar, but in the original game, when you leave Midgar, you tend to find monsters everywhere. Midgar or Shinra didn't create all of them, certainly, although I'm sure they create some of them. In this case, though, these things are just machines that Shinra created. And there was a mission back in Sector 7 slums to kill some genetic mutant that Shinra had created, too. So I guess you really can blame them Specific, uh, specifically for this kind of shit. But, you know. To fight for my... I heard, I heard! You got them all, right? Robots from the reactor getting lost in the slums. Must be because of the explosion up top, huh? They must have thought they were protecting the reactor and figured I was trespassing on their turf or something. Maybe. Almost feel sorry for them. Getting all lost and confused and like that. Oh, what am I saying? Man or machine? Shinra bitches get what they deserve. Now hold on. 
Anyway, I think it's safe to say our work here is finished. If you're ever in the market for a merc again, remember, you can count on Cloud. Uh, sure. And sorry about putting this on you all of a sudden. I'm really glad you were willing to help out, though. Thanks again. Actually, while you're here, I've got another favor to ask. There's this old guy who hangs out in front of the weapons shop. I think he might need your help. Would you mind talking to him? Better catch him soon. Oh, I know you. You must be that mercenary. I have a problem. It's the anniversary of my wife's death, and I wanted to visit her grave. But I can't because some creatures have turned the graveyard into their nest. Could you do me a favor and go there in my stead? She shouldn't be alone today. It'll cost you. That's fine, that's fine. The graveyard's right by the head of the river. But I heard they put a new gate in recently to replace the old broken one. Now that those creatures have moved in, I'm sure it's locked up tight. Didn't we buy a graveyard key off Moggy? I think we did. This guy's mission isn't going to be all that far away, but I will still speed up the travel to get there and the fight. There are a lot of different... Um, no, they reuse a lot of the same areas. Because I'm pretty sure we're going to jump back into this area a couple of times later on. I guess it does sort of make sense that they're not going to create for every single side mission an entire new area of the map. In fact, I would bet that the designers of the game went and created this environment with the idea of, you know what, this will be good for something. The, uh, the environment designers. This will be great for something. And then they had the scenario writers and all that people doing the side quest decide, like, okay, yeah, we can use that for this guy looking for his wife's grave and whatever else it was later on in the game that you have in this area. I forget what it was. I know I'd seen something. It's like, okay, you can reuse it. It comes across as a little strange... But they definitely did a better job here than, say, like Dragon Age 2, which just reused the same four environments over and over and over and over and over again for every side mission or even main mission, and it was really obvious and really annoying. In this case, we'll only be back here a couple of times, so it's not too bad. I guess it's going to depend on how much time developers have to really work on this kind of stuff. This must be it. Hey, you want to say a prayer too? No thanks. I think you've got it covered. And now, the weather report. I'm really grateful for what you did. Here's your reward. I owe him a lot. Maybe more than I can ever repay. And now, I owe you a lot, too. I know it's not much, but I hope it makes up for it a little bit. We paid our respects to your wife. And we took care of those creatures. Oh, that's such a relief to hear. I can't tell you how much it was weighing on my mind. I was beginning to think I might never be able to visit her grave again. With my bad back and my legs, my whole body's a mess, frankly. I... I didn't think I could make it past the creatures. But I was prepared to die trying. And then you two came along. Still, I've got to face facts. Creatures or no, I can't keep making these trips. Don't say that. This is the graveyard key. Run it back to Moggy. But I just told you about my legs. Why don't you just give it back? Okay. It'll cost you 5,000 gil, though. 5,000? It's always money with you people. Hmm. Fine. I won't ask you for anything else. I'll take your damned key and give it to the boy. <sighs> it's downright depressing. What is the world coming to these days? It feels good to help people out. 
doesn't it? Yeah. You having fun yet? Heaps. Then you can't be afraid to show it more. Don't forget, it's all about service and salesmanship. I'll leave that to you. All right, but don't think you can rely on me forever, mister. Wasn't planning to. That's good. Because I command a very good salary. What a sad state all of these slum towns are in if they have to rely on a mercenary to come rolling through town in order to deal with all of their problems. I guess this is something that's not so unusual to them that none of them feel it's all that strange to hire some guy they found in the street to go and do things for them like this. I guess maybe this has happened more than a couple of times, so... <laughs> it's weird. Kind of depressing. But I guess they gotta do what they have to do. It's not like uh, this town seems to have what Sector 7 has, where they have their own little militia to try and protect the people. I don't see anything like that here. Hmm. Aerith, you're back! Come, look what we've done with the flowers! Lovely, don't you think? Great job. That's wonderful. <sighs> Isn't it? Oh, I nearly forgot. I saw some Shinra suit walking toward your house a little while ago. He was dressed all in black. A little scary looking. As tall as the sky. Oh. You're that former soldier, aren't you? Cloud, was it? Former soldier turned problem solver. Are you okay, Miss Folia? You look upset. Uh, yeah, I am pretty upset. The kids are still off doing patrols, even though it's now time for their lessons. Not a single one of them has come back yet. Patrols? Is that a leaf house thing? Something they do to help out? That's right. In return for the donations we receive, the kids go around town picking up litter, running errands, that kind of thing. I don't suppose you've seen any of them, have you? <sighs> you see, I have some important plans this evening, and I really need to go and get ready. Would you like us to go round them up? Oh, that would be wonderful. There are five of them out on patrol right now. They all wear homemade swords on their backs, so they should be easy to spot. Okay, a bunch of kids running around trying to do this stuff wasn't really what I had in mind. But, whatever. Wow! You're that soldier, right? Can I ask you a super important question? I heard bad people broke the Mako reactor, and there's gonna be another war because of it. Is that true? Who knows? But isn't there something else you should be worrying about right now? <gasps> I forgot about Miss Folia's lesson! I gotta head back to the house! I know. About well, that's one kid down. Wonder why all these other kids aren't in school. Is it maybe just because this is some sort of like an orphanage? Oh. Hey there, how goes the patrol? There's a lot more people on the streets than usual. Maybe because the reactor blew up? Well, you've been keeping a very sharp lookout. But, don't you think you're forgetting something important? Oh, Miss Foley of Lessons! I gotta get back to the house! Off to find the next kid, and super speed, because I couldn't find the little bastard. Oh, there's, uh, there's this one here. <laughs> Hey there, how goes the patrol? Great! I've been picking up garbage and giving people directions. Plus I helped an old lady cross the street. You've been busy. It's a normal day for me. Gotta work hard. The house depends on people's donations. Oh no! I'm late! Did you see Miss Folia? Is she mad? Oh, I gotta go! I'm sorry! Yeah, I don't buy it that all these kids really didn't remember that school was supposed to be in session. Hello, Cloud. Sir, it's a real honor to meet you. I think you soldier guys are awesome. I want to be strong and tough when I grow up, too. You sound very determined. These are dangerous times. A reactor blew up and a bunch of kids lost their friends and families. Who knows what might blow up next? I guess that means more children might be coming to the house soon. And I think the teachers are going to have a whole lot more work to do. Speaking of teachers, Miss Foley is looking for you. Oh man, I completely forgot! 
I have to get back right now. Kids are supposedly orphans from the Wu Tai War. Wu Tai. Ah! You scared me. Hey there. How goes the patrol? I've been watching them really close. I'm trying to learn all about the business. You want to open up a shop of your own someday? Yeah, so I can earn lots of money and use it to help the house. The teachers don't like to talk about it, but we know the donations aren't enough to keep things running. Uh, but that's a secret, okay? I'm not supposed to tell anyone. Anyway, I gotta go study. That's everyone. Let's go back to the house. I wonder how many uh, people were supposed to have died during that war. The children finally came back, thanks to you two. You've been a great help. Okay, everyone, come inside. It's time to hit the books. <sighs> you guys, the Toad King's back. I saw him near the hideout. We gotta do something about him. The Toad King? A weird, creepy monster we've seen near the hideout lately. He wears a crown and walks around like he owns the place. If he's not a king, he's gotta be monster royalty at least. I bet a soldier could beat him up easy. Oh yeah, real easy. But here's the thing. I don't work for free. Or cheap. But we don't have any money! The Watch wouldn't ask for money. But if we ask any other grown-ups for help, they'll find out about the hideout. And that'll be it. We really don't want to lose the hideout. Come on, help us! Oh, and we'll give you some cool treasure if you do. And if that's not enough, I'll pay the rest of your fee once I open my shop. Well, if you won't help, then we'll just have to kill it ourselves. <sighs> I'll do it for three gil. Huh? I'm offering a special discount right now on Toad King jobs. Looks like it's your lucky day. Awesome! Now that's my kind of bargain. I don't remember any Toad King in the original game, but they do have some creative license here. Okay, so all these kids were supposedly orphans from the Wu-Tai War. And it's something that, you know, I don't know, maybe there's some greater backstory to the whole thing. I know the beginning of Crisis Core, the PSP game, was the... dealt with Zack and whatnot fighting in the Wu-Tai War. But I have to admit that I don't really know much about what went on there. I do know the war ended some years prior to the beginning of the game with Shinra winning and... Wutai was sort of, like, um, in danger of losing its own culture, like its warrior culture, and it was just sort of turned into some kind of like a tourist destination for people because they lost their military, they weren't really a power anymore, and they just, I guess, had to rely on whatever they could, which was just to attract tourists for vacations and all that. But I don't know what started the war. I don't really know how it ended, and... I don't know why Shinra wants to reignite the war in the remake. Because that was not a plot point in the original game. Shinra didn't seem to have any interest in going back to war with Wutai. And I guess Wutai was effectively beaten in the original game. But for some reason, Shinra wants to start that war back up again. So, I don't know. I guess we'll find more about that later. Did you defeat the Toad King? Yep. Kicked his butt real good. Awesome! I knew you could do it! Now we don't have to worry about the King and his smelly friends. Thank you so much! Here, this is for you. The treasure we promised. It's definitely worth at least three gil. Okay, kids. Playtime's over for now. I've prepared a special assignment for everyone. One that I expect you to finish today. Understood? Uh, yes! Yes, Miss Folia! I appreciate you getting rid of the Toad King, by the way. Wow, Miss Folia. You must know all their secrets. Oh, if only. Easier said than done. They're always on the move, looking for new adventures, chasing new dreams. All while trying to make the lives of everyone around them just a little bit better. I try to make sure they don't stumble and fall. And when they finally do, I help them back up. Hmm. Sounds exhausting. <laughs> Sometimes it is. 
But I want the children to know that until they can stand on their own two feet, that I'm here to support them, care for them, love them. That even if we're not actually related, we're still a family, a real family in all the ways that matter. If I can do that for them, then, well, then maybe I'm making this world a better place. I know you are. My predecessor taught me everything I know. I just took up his torch and ran with it, I guess. Uh, not that I'm anything close to what he was. Biggs is one of a kind. <gasps> oh no! I've completely lost track of time! Do you have somewhere you need to be? More like a dream I need to fulfill. Thank you again for your help. I wonder what kind of dream she's chasing tonight. No idea. Thanks again for saving our hideout from the king. In return, I let everyone know you guys can join the game as special guests. If you want to know more, then come to the hideout. All right, so I sort of ended this one a little bit earlier than I expected to. I expected it to last about 45 minutes. This one is going to be a little more than 38 minutes. So, yeah, I managed to cut down on that time quite a bit. And we got a nail bat. Uh, it's, proficiency is pretty good, but I'm not really in the mood to train up on all this kind of crap right now. It's not really necessary yet. I'll get to it, I'm sure. In the future, and in the past, in fact, I'm going to attempt to keep the length of the episodes down a bit. Now, when it comes to the normal missions, or like storyline missions, going through the main storyline of the game, I'm going to try and keep the episodes less than a half an hour long. Now, all of the dungeons are going to be longer than that. So I'm going to end up having to break them all down into smaller chunks so I can keep the running time shorter. It'll lengthen the number of episodes, too, which will make it easier for a production standpoint, I guess. For these ones where we're just going and doing the side missions, like I did in the Sector 7 episode and the Sector 5 episode that you're watching now, I'm going to clump a bunch of the different side missions into individual episodes. This one, where we did like five, six side missions, it was over an hour. It was about an hour the episode would have been. I managed to shrink it down. Still going to have to break it into two episodes for all the side missions of Sector 5. Hope there aren't too many more of these I have to do, but got to do what I got to do to keep the running time shorter. If you're still watching this long episode at this point, thanks for watching. Got some more side quests in the next one, and let's call it a day. Yes, she's got a knack for public relations. Very popular down here as a result. Nevertheless, she is a criminal and a threat to the public order. I've made it my mission to unmask the villain, but the locals have been uncooperative and uncommunicative, to put it mildly. And now that my identity as a reporter has been exposed, my sources have all deserted me. Which brings me to you, the merc of the hour, and the man who will serve up my scoop.